meditate a lot, a lot, and with just one single attention just to help with the, the higher energy from the original universe. Every day I thank the councils and thank the power of God and the cosmic for helping humankind to become more enlightened, more loving, and peaceful. Helping the needy is really helping yourself. The reward is more than anything you can imagine. You're a good boy, and I love you forever, forever. You're my best friend. It's not how much you have. It's the best you give. Help yourself, you know, cultivate, meditate, pray. You keep yourself in the same path, in a straight area. Keep your mind clean and determined. God bless you. I love you. I just show you the way. You just have to walk. You see? That's why the more positive, the more meditation, the more your life change. Okay? Positive, positive. What is so special about a woman that you clap so loud? <laughs> hey, ça va comme ça, c'est mieux. Ça va mieux, comme un roi, comme un roi, quoi. Tcha, big king. <laughs> Where is your wife? Oh, you're hiding. I was thinking this is her, but it's not it, and then... <laughs> It looks similar. <laughs> so for Israel, no. no. Colombia is similar here. I just say all people are similar to me. <laughs> I have too many children. I have no idea where you come from. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bad, bad woman. No husband, only children, <laughs> lot of children. Cha cha cha. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, many days now, I read you many stories about monks. Yeah, yeah. Then I also praise the monks for, you know, having great merit. <laughs> I even give my clothes to them. <laughs> I worry because they didn't have monks' clothes. They just wear your clothes, and then they wanted to become official. So they shave their head, and then my assistant comes to tell me, Master, they're all shaving their heads now. <laughs> I say, why? <laughs> why do that now? But they have been nuns for 17 years or more. more. It's only one or less because from SMTV, but the rest are 16, 17 years since, since ever since I make the little temple in Yongdong for them. That's, my God, 17 years. Wow, and they still look very young. You know, the young nuns and, yeah, beautiful people, and they go out work every day, you know? I mean, work like usual, like people. And I heard that the, the farmers around them, the farmer owners around them, around their temple, where they're working, they're very happy with them. They like them, they prefer them, you know, because they work honestly and fast and not complaining, you know. Good people, good vibrations, so they hire them all the time. <laughs> very busy, busy. If you guys have no job, become monk and I <laughs> follow them and you're immediately welcome in Korea. <laughs> you know, in a gardening job, fruit trees and stuff like that, yeah. Uh, the men and women, uh, uh, nuns and monks, they work in there, so they take care of themselves. 
Okay. If anybody become monks and nuns like that, I don't mind. Just all welcome. <laughs> go take care of yourself. <laughs> in the Buddha time, you can uh, go back in. And this time, you go work. No problem. Then I don't need to worry about where you stay and what uh, I have to do for you. Hmm? Hmm. I give them all my <laughs> Korean nuns. I, I just had it. You know, I didn't have chance to wear them all yet. And then I thought I could be a monk at home at least, and now I can't. <laughs> what kind of luck I have. Why you have to shave your head just now and all my clothes are gone? <laughs> I was worried too small for them, but I said, try, try. You know, bring in there and try, and it's, it's okay, huh? All of it's okay, right? Yeah, wonderful. In Korea, do you have enough? Oh, I, I gave a lot of money. You can use some, okay? Yeah. So you can um, divide, you know, each one and take home and put together or in the bank and then for extra some time when you cannot work and some older people um, buy medicine, it will last a long, 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 long time. <laughs> yeah. If not enough, I will offer more later, okay? Um. Hmm. Uh, up to now, mostly I talk to you about monks and nuns, but in the Buddha's time it's different, okay? Truly, monks and nuns have to go out and beg for food, even the Buddha himself. Imagine the world honored one, teacher of heaven and earth, have to go out begging for food. Humility, okay? We are nothing to compare to, to him already in humility. He was a prince, and he will be king of a nation. He forsake everything, and wives and children, to become a monk. And the tradition of monk must go out back in India, just so that you, like, renounce everything, detach to everything. Okay. So he does the same, and eat only once a day. Yeah, being monk is not that easy, even now, huh? You have to deny many things, self-denial. And uh, when you're old, because you live alone, maybe nobody take care of you. If you are like ascetic monks, when you live in the forest, when you get older, nobody take care. So it's not like, okay, same. It's not same, okay? But I don't mean, I don't mean that you lay people are bad or worse. Not necessarily, okay? Not necessarily, because it all depends on the heart, but that's their way, you know, they, they chose to, to live that way, ascetic way. It's wonderful also. Understand, I also wish to live like that. For one person, maybe if you guys give me too much hard time, I go to uh, <laughs> work in the field with them hiding there. You wouldn't be able to think that I'm there. I go plow the field, earn some money, go home, eat, <laughs> and then don't care about anybody. That would be... You know, a good life, yeah, for me, yeah. But being monks or nuns, you, you have to really uh, pay attention to, to the Dharma, you know, to meditation, yeah. So don't work too hard, work enough to earn money only, and put it in the bank on the interest, yeah. The money I gave can put it in the bank in a high interest rate and every month take out something for medicine or an extra, you know, dentist, whatever, okay? Yeah, extra. Yeah. Uh, uh, what I mean is, then uh, they live together is not bad, but some live in the forest alone and all that. You know, when you're old, nobody take care of you. When you renounce everything, you have no father, mother, your sister, brothers. Yes. Mostly uh, monks are supposed to go out of the country even, you know, but nowadays it's so difficult. Hmm? The only country they can go out too quickly is uh, North Korea, you know. <laughs> neighboring country, <laughs> because they are like a peninsula. Huh? Where do they go? Jump in the sea, go to Japan or something. <laughs> yeah, so they, they do this kind of, uh, they go away. Before, the Buddha doesn't have any videotape or something, so the monks have to study diligently whatever the Buddha has said from the elderly and then go out and spread it, you see? That's the only way before. 
Nowadays I just sit here and then uh, the whole world is watching. It's so convenient. I have to thank the technology of our time. We are very lucky people, fortunate. I mean, our technology is not tip-top yet, you know, not the best yet, but still it affords us a lot of comfortable uh, means, you know, aeroplane, you know, jump in a few hours, come see Master. Yeah? Before, from Korea to come here, I don't know how many lifetimes <laughs> walking. <laughs> so the Buddha in the old time, he also walked, just run around the small countries in India, vicinity, huh? Because how long can a monk walk, especially thousands together, you know? Yeah. So it was really a phenomenon, it was really a big, sacrifice of the Buddha and the monk at that time to do all that, walking everywhere to, to preach the Dharma, to save people. Yes. And nowadays it's different. Eh? We cannot go out begging and, 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 and you know, tell the whole monk uh, one, one kilometer long <laughs> the traffic that will kill us. Eh? They say, get, get, get out, out, out. <laughs> yeah. Even if you walk on the sidewalk, there'll be bicycle, motorcycle, you, you can't just walk like that. Yeah? So it's very different nowadays. We have to take care of ourselves. Yes. Uh, and f from many days now, I keep telling you about the, the monk, monkhood, yeah? But not necessarily that you have to become a monk in order to, to uh, reach enlightenment, a uh, high, high level, yeah? It's just they chose that way, the pure, pure, purified way, you know? So we have to respect them. I don't just come in, buddy, 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 stuff like that, okay? <laughs> respect, okay? They chose that way. They chose their way of solitude, okay? Respect. Even though they go out to work, but they don't uh, uh, touchy feely like we do. Understand? Like you do. So. Mm, it's okay. Uh, in the Buddha's time, there was a person named Vimala Kirti. You heard of him? Vimala Kirti, right? Yeah. He's a lay person, lay disciples of the Buddha, but his wisdom so high, his attainment is so huge that all the monks are very, you know, keeping <laughs> a, a distance, respectful distance, because he has such an eloquence and such power that uh, some of the monks cannot match him. Yeah. So when he was sick, it's a very long... I would like to have read it to you, but probably we have to have another retreat again, or not retreat, but like casual, you know, visit with many people and a camera and all that, and then we will read that story one night, one day after another, because it's a long one. You know, it's not like one story like this or two story that we can pick. No, it's it's a, like a, the whole, like the whole life work of uh, Vimala Kirti, Vimala Kirti. But he, he said Vimala Kirti, a Buddhist. Vimala Kirti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, say it in Sanskrit. I don't know Korean. <laughs> it's already already difficult with the Vietnamese <laughs> and Chinese. And it is in English, so we will have a better time for me <laughs> translating sometimes, twisting the tongue, you know? Okay. And one day, you know, if we have a chance again to see each other here or somewhere, I will read that for you. I will, will, will read, 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 read the, the, the whole, 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 whole thing. <laughs> okay. That man, he's respected by the whole country, kings and officials, prime ministers and, you know, rich and poor people. And all the, many of the monks, Buddha's monk disciples, in awe of him, you know. <laughs> so when he pretend, he was sick, he make manifest it that he's sick. Maybe he was sick, because he saved so many people because he got sick. And they come and ask him why you're sick, for example. If you are so great, why are you sick? You say, I'm sick. It's just, you know, like that, huh? Mm, because some 
we get sick if we get this body, and if we live in this world, in this world. But if all sentient beings are not sick, then my sick will be gone. Yeah. If they are not sick, then I am not sick. <laughs> That's what he said, and he said many uh, wonderful ways, eloquently. Eloquently. Yeah. So when he was manifested as sick, uh, kings and prime ministers and big people come see him. But then the Sekamoni Buddha and his monk's disciple did not come, not yet. <laughs> First, uh, the Buddha sent Sariputra, Sariputra said, No, no, <laughs> you know, it's a summary, yeah? He is too eloquent. He said, Thus and thus, and I don't know how to answer. I'm not coming. <laughs> and then, Maugalayayana uh, also don't want to come. And, uh, Manchu three, etc. You know, they are reluctant to come to see that lay person. He was incredible, understand? He was a great Bodhisattva. Many people uh, delivered because of him, yeah? liberated because of him. He is great, he is great. Great eloquence, great power. Sometimes the Bodhisattva do not are not born to be monks, you know? Yeah, but to be a lay person. So that it's doing different job. Yeah? Sometimes they're born as prime minister, kings, merchants, uh, virgin boy, virgin girl, or any, you know, like Bodhisattva Kwanin Bodhisattva, she he manifests in different appearance. Yeah, sometimes as princess, yeah, things like that. Mm. For different affinity with hum- with uh, beings on this planet, there are many other stories about the sacrifice of the Buddha. But I read you something uh, relaxing for a change. Okay? Yeah. All right. Okay. Here. This is a person uh, too dark. How how he is uh, offering uh, an, an ashram for the Buddha? Okay. So you lay people also don't don't feel despair, okay? Yeah. Just different choices, huh? Different choice. If you have an enlightened way of a method, then you will also reach the high level. Depends on sincerity. Yeah. It's example, you've seen many, you know, lay woman have two children already in Hong Kong and then she saw so many things. And she and Israel and uh, Spanish, and, you know, all lay people, etc., etc. Togo, uh, yeah, he looked black, but he's so bright. <laughs> His light is so bright. Yeah, multicolor, technic color. <laughs> I'm reading you of a lay person who make offering of an ashram. To the Buddha. According to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten directions all respectfully before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk or, you know, beautiful cloth and I just make it more popular, yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say, if I've done something wrong, according to the tradition, my heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me. At least other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. Tudha making an ashram. Thus I have heard, I feel much better now, I don't know why. I mean, I feel the energy is together, you understand? Like we united.
I have to thank you. I have to thank you. Sometimes the tree is growing all over. We have to trim a little bit, okay? Yeah, I hate no one, even though I say I hate this kind of person, but I don't hate anyone. Understand? I just hate this kind of personality or behavior, maybe, because it's from Maya, yeah? But I hate no one. I love all of you, even the one I scolded or sent away. I love them all. And you can always count on me in any time of need, all the time, all the time, 24-7, all your life and the next life and the next life. I will always be with you. It doesn't matter who and what level you are, okay? Yeah. So don't misunderstand a lot. It just feels so light and so happy. It just feels so wonderful. I feel like we are all one, you know, like... <laughs> See, just we have to trim some unruly branches, you know, like it grow too much. It doesn't grow in, inside the garden, it grows out into the street and you can't walk. And you have to trim or bind it a little bit, that's all, okay? I feel really, really, if it's like this every day, I can sit forever <laughs> with you. You know, it's such a, such a different, you know? Feel the lightness, yeah? The non-binding, the not... Uh, pulling, the not, uh, you know, snatching, not dragging. Just feel like you're so many people, but I don't feel any of the obstructive energy, understand? I feel like none of you are here, but I know all of you are here. It feel no, no binding, no dragging. So wonderful. I thank all of you. I thank all of you. Thank you, really, thank you. It's a gift for me also, sit in the assembly where I feel everybody is one, you know. <laughs> one, one goal, one ideal, one supportive energy, just so wonderful, you have no idea, I don't know how to tell you. Do you feel anything different? You do? Really? Yeah, that is good. <laughs> Then we understand each other. And thank you for not criticizing me. That I, you know, trim somebody out, <laughs> and trim one or two branches, and it makes big difference. Big difference. Yeah. But even at home, you know, you have a, a driving driveway, and if some tree just growing out, then you have to trim it. Otherwise, it scratch your car. Even though it doesn't trouble you much, but it scratch your car, or sometimes it bang your head when you walk through it, you know? In the night you forget you to bend down, to avoid the, the, the branches, then it might bang your head and you might fall down. And you could even endanger your life, huh? Same, any group, any group, even business, you know, even enterprise, they must dream sometimes. They call it pruning, uh, pruning uh, effect, yeah? After pruning, it's better. Yeah, even the government sometimes they have to shuffle cabinet, you know, <laughs> or pruning out some of the non-cooperative, uh, non-togetherness kind of people. Yeah, that's why government they have uh, one or two kind of, uh, how you say, uh, party, you know, uh, all the party members or one with the leader. Yeah, and that party member or one with the leader. Yes. Okay, this man. Mm. Thus I have heard. <laughs> that was my story. Now it's a Buddha story. <laughs> no, I just feel so good, I had to tell you. I feel so light, so light. You know, I feel like none of you are here, that kind of feeling, understand? But you are here. But, but you're not here, understand? It feels so light. <laughs> no coming, no going. <laughs> like the Buddhas, the, the light energy, I can't explain it. But you understand, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, okay, that's what I feel. So light, so light. So, oh, wonderful, thank you so much, really, really. I cannot thank you enough, my God, it's wonderful, it's a relief. <laughs> okay, it's just even like, even you're driving a safe, 
highway, but there is just a stone on the highway. It could also make in trouble for you, you know? Yeah. Mm. Okay, now at this time, the Buddha in the, in Vungsa uh, city, in the bamboo grove, yeah. In Save country at that time, there was a big officials, uh, probably prime minister, yeah, yes. Uh, his name is Tuda. He's, can, he's, a, he's a very rich person, but he's very compassionate. He often give away his uh, properties, his wealth, to share with other people. Yeah, it's not like he's rich and prime minister and he's very arrogant. No, he's a good, 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 good person as well. Mm. Uh, ah, he often give it, give things to people who are, you know, uh, lonely or or has no one or, or in trouble or poor, you know. So so they they call him Kap Kodok, meaning giving to the the um, the vulnerable, the the lonesome, you know, yeah. to whoever lonesome or like uh, widows and orphans and elderly who has no one to care for. That's why his name is like that, Kap Kodok, meaning giving to the lonesome, <laughs> lonesome and poor, needy, yeah. <laughs> he has seven sons and the six of them already married. The seventh also a very moral, morally fit and uh, distinguished person, yeah. He's uh, beautiful looking also. And he seemed, this uh, prime minister seemed uh, favor the last son, that's his favorite. I guess this one is more distinguished than the rest, and uh, also more good looking, more morally stable. I don't know, but most parents, they love the last one very much anyway. <laughs> it's famous in Vietnam, right? Famous in Vietnam. Mm. When I came back from England to visit my, my parents after before the war, just before the war, and I got out just before the war finished. Otherwise, I got stuck there, and then probably you won't see me here. I might, probably I'm one of the boats and sink in the sea, or maybe end up in Australian shore, or China, or wherever, who knows, yeah? Mm. I just got out just some days before it's close, you know? After the war finished, no one can just go out like that. My father, he couldn't come to see me that often. He came to Hong Kong okay, but he couldn't go anywhere else. So you, <laughs> you are safe nowhere. <laughs> I was only eight, nine years old. I took care of my, you know, mother just gave birth and had trouble. So I had to go to the prison and, and ask uh, the, the war to please release my father for sometimes because my mother need help. She was sick after the, the birth of my, my younger sister. So I went there and crying and begging, and then they let, let him go. <laughs> Just let him go 24 hours, come on. You know, relieve my mother. She couldn't, she couldn't pass a urine or anything, it's just like infection or something. So he came home and then immediately it's better. Yeah. Imagine a prisoner in a sensitive time in the war, and they release him. But first he make joke to me, I say, you have to stay here, then your father can go. I say, no. <laughs> no, thank you, I have a house. <laughs> but later when my, um, after we named my younger sister, uh, the name of the warden, of that prisoner, of that prison, because he was so kind. He was very kind. He talked to me and, you know, making jokes and all that, yeah. Then he let both of us go home immediately and come back next day. He trusted that much. And he let. Because first I stay there and ask to see my father. They don't let me. So I just stand right in front of I just sit in front of the gate, crying, crying and waiting. I'm not going nowhere. 
I said, I'm not going anywhere until I see my father, because my mom is dying. I have nobody. I have nobody at home. I can't. My mother is dying. My sister, nobody take care. I must see my father. And then finally, you know, later, later, many hours later, they let him come out. <laughs> and then I asked the world to release him, and then they did. Bless his soul. So we name her sister, my sister, the name of this warden, even though that name is boys, you know, it's a manly. <laughs> In Vietnam, we have different names. You know, woman, different name, a flower and <laughs> springtime, you know, a blossom, you know. But we don't name him. His name is like one of our hero, king, hero and became king of Vietnam, Quang Trung. Yeah, okay. And then that name is not a little millimeter feminine at all. <laughs> That's his macho. 400%. <laughs> but because my father and mother are very touched by the warden kindness, exceptionally kindness. What kind of prisoner in Vietnam at that time, in the war, can go home just like that? No warranty of his return. No. Just by trust. First they don't want to let him, and then I just sit there and cry all day. <laughs> Yeah, until the, you know, almost very the late afternoon. And then I got my father out. <laughs> I was only eight, maybe, or nine years old, something like that. Yeah, I have to travel, you know, with the, this kind of uh, chup chup chup, tuk tuk, tuk tuk, tuk tuk. The scooter, but they have a, a little, they have things behind to carry, you know? Yeah. And we sit there and all these uh, poisonous toxins fly into my nose and I was sick and vomit and everything. And the rose is bumpy and you never know when you run onto a bomb. Because that time is the war, sometimes both sides, you know, you never know who put bomb on the road. And sometimes the, 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 the car just explode like that. Civ 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 civilians, not, not soldiers. They do that, and sometimes they don't take it away because they thought the soldiers come in there or so, for some reason. Yeah. Many people also die like that on the road because of bomb. Yeah. You, you don't know the bomb is there. And then the car is heavy, press it down, then boom, like that. And I had to travel alone from my uh, district all the way to the big, big, big cities with that kind of car. But finally, my, my father was home and we were happy. At that time, our family was also in trouble because my mother is making some like, like uh, loan banking, you know, and many people don't pay. So we almost like bankrupt. And then uh, father is imprisoned sister uh, married and far away, mother just gave birth to a sister, and a sick, sick, really sick. If my father didn't come on time, she would die. We don't have hospital nearby, understand? And nobody is so expert in this, just my father was good. She was already swollen up with all the water and whatever inside, you know. She's dying. If he didn't come home then, she would have died, yeah. I don't know why I tell you all this. Ah, okay, because, <laughs> because I came home from England, you know? It's still the war, but, but I came home. And then I got out before of the war. I wanted to stay there, you know, stay back home, but my father said, everybody wants to go out and you come back in. <laughs> he said, go, 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 go back to England, don't stay here. Lucky, otherwise if I stay a few more days, then I'll be stuck. Yeah, when the war finished, control everything, border will close, aeroplane not allowed to fly just like that, understand? Lucky, lucky. And because I came home, you know, and I saw my sister, you know, the, the young, younger sister. She's so well fed and she has everything she wanted, more than what I had when I was younger. I said, that's not fair. <laughs> 
because at that time our family are okay already, you know? And she's very clever in talk. She talks so sweet, she melts your heart, you know? She always uh, hang around my mother and talk so sweet and praise her and expressing love, kissing hand and kissing everywhere and hug, hug and mama this, mama that. Ah, uh, yeah, so they are together like an item, you know? <laughs> But I have to confess, I wasn't like that. I was very kind of uh, solemn, you know? I'm not sissy sassy like her. She knows how to get her way into everything. So she, she was, you know, nice looking and you're growing bigger than me. Woo, big, bigger. You saw it in Hong Kong picture, yeah? She's more well fed than me and my elder sister. Good luck, you know, lucky girl. <laughs> we were both born in a time of war, and our family sometimes good, sometimes not. So both of us are not that lucky. But she also know how to talk. I say, my God, I have never seen a daughter talk like this. I should have talked like that to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> then probably I get everything I want. <laughs> so we all gone away. So she's the only one at home, you know, a spoiled rotten. Yeah, yeah. But uh, well, then I thought to myself. She, myself, she deserves it. Because she's so sweet, talking like that to my mom, of course, kissing here, you know, hugging there, all day. <laughs> of course, mom loves it. <laughs> so I just want to tell you that the last, in Vietnam is famous, the last one is always very beloved and, and spoiled, no matter good or not. So in this story, nothing new, mm, nothing surprised. <laughs> Oh, so for just that, I went back to Vietnam. <laughs> Many decades already, yes. <laughs> five, five more decades passed since that story of my father's imprisonment. Yes. And because of that, it's a, another good news, because of my visit and begging, and he saw that, and then the warden revised my father's case and checking thoroughly. Yeah, and then not not long after he's released completely, innocent. Yeah. <laughs> because it came to his attention, you know, he met me. He was really very loving to me. <laughs> he talked lovingly. He said, "If your father go, you must stay here." <laughs> you know, like. Uh, uh, I say, exchange prisoner stuff. <laughs> I say, no, thank you, I have a home. My mother is very sick. My sister, little, I must come home, please. <laughs> so he say, okay, okay. <laughs> Make sure your father come back. <laughs> Something like that, you know, he was really kind, very kind. And after that, just, just some, how I many, maybe, Maybe 10 days after, my father completely clean, clear, clear the name, came home. It's very difficult, you know? Yeah. Before that time, I was going, coming to the prison for my mother's sake because she has to do business. I'm the one who visit my father often to bring some extra food for him, you know, like some... some uh, uh, some rice, uh, uh, rice cover, the cover of the rice is full of vitamin B and all that, because in prison my mother thinks he needs it. Yeah. So it brings some natural food, so, because they sleep on the floor and it's cold and, you know. So we bring, uh, my mother made some good food and I am the one who keep bringing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that was the first time I saw the, the chief of the warden. Yeah, and talk to him directly, yes. That was wonderful, and then parents were very happy, you know. I don't remember they say they're proud of me or anything. My, my pa parents are not very expressive. And hmm. also didn't think about that. And now I thought about that, they should have said, I'm proud of you, no? <laughs> too late, too late. <laughs> Cannot say anymore. <laughs> Yeah, in the, in the West we would do that, right? 
if it's your children, you would say, I'm proud of you, sweetheart, and hug, hug, hug. My parents are not, not that type, yes. My mother hugged me more often, father never. Mm. You know, Confucius type, <laughs> detached. <laughs> All right, let's, let's go back to the last son of the prime minister of a Save country. Mm. Uh, the last one was his favorite, okay? And uh, now one of his uh, friend, one of his good friend, came, uh, for the, one of the Brahman good friend, come one day. And so the prime minister told him, you know, Friend, I have seven children, but six of them already have family. Only the last one, uh, not yet. I would, I would like to ask you a favor. Please go and check really truly to see which is a really good family daughter. Yeah, uh, almost you know equal in status and good good, good behavior, good moral standard. Truly. A virtuous girl, yeah, and then ask if they marry my son for me. So okay, mm. and that he say no problem. Also have to be you know clean and pure and beautiful looking. You know he has a lot of condition. <laughs> I hope he find one. <laughs> you know beautiful and. Talented, know how to take care of the house, and moral and pure, you know, educated and <laughs> yeah, filial and polite and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I don't think I fit this description. <laughs> Lucky I wasn't there at that time. <laughs> All right, so the Brahman friend say, no problem, mo. Mm. <laughs> Consider is done. Because I know many people anyway, this is not a difficult thing for me to keep looking uh, and searching for you. All he has to do is just go on the internet, right? <laughs> <laughs> Put on a search request with all this quality. Yeah, nowadays we have agency, you know, for married, right? I see on TV, call number so and so, and you meet your ideal mate today even. <laughs> I was thinking, maybe I try. <laughs> if you don't like me, then maybe I try that. <clears throat> so uh, one time, this Brahman friend went, went around in uh, Vung Sa city. Uh, he go into another great big of, uh, I mean high official, court official to, uh, for arm, you know? Probably he knows many people who just go there and then they would invite him anyway. You know, the Brahman also went out for arm, you know, meaning begging for food. Brahmins not always do that. Some Brahman married, some Brahman live like monks. So this man probably one of those monks, Brahman monks, Hindu monks. So he go to beg for food. This uh, uh, big, this um, high court official, Name is uh, Ho Yi. Mm. Uh, at that time, his uh, his daughter brought out the food to offer to this Brahman priest, and then his the Brahman priest saw observed this. Oh, she looked very uh, dignified and very good behaving and beautiful as well. So he was asking. Excuse me, noble miss, are you, uh, can I ask you a question? You know what question. <laughs> Should I read the question? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, please, please, sir, go ahead, ask me. And then he said, even if I ask this question, whether offending you or not, good or bad, uh, please don't be upset, okay? So she say, no, no, sir, no, I wouldn't dare. And then she say, uh, this is a kind of, you know, uh, he means it's not really a right thing to ask, but are you married? 
<laughs> no, no, sir. I'm still single, staying with my parents. Uh, anyone already asked for your hand yet? Say no, no one. <laughs> uh, so, uh, great official, is he home today? I mean, your father, is he home today? Uh, yes, yes, my father is at home. Uh, please go to tell your father that I would like to visit him and I would like to talk about something important. So he, she came in and said, Father, outside there is a Brahmin who want to see you uh, for something important. So I said, okay, okay, and uh, let him in. And then they both are talking, talking, yeah, very happy. Mm. And then the Brahmin said, <clears throat> wow, this is a photo. I mean, um, second prime minister or assistant prime minister even. Uh, do you know, um, this is another country, yeah? Uh, or maybe same country, I don't, I don't know. A different, maybe, next door or something, yeah. Do you know uh, Tudak, the prime minister of Save country? He said, no, I have never seen him, but I heard of his good name. Uh, second prime minister, yeah? Or maybe assistant prime minister, yeah? Uh, vice, vice prime minister. Oh, this Tudak uh, person in Save country is the richest person in that land. Uh, he has one last son. Oh, you beautiful, intelligent, you know, in the future he probably be someone very, very great name, you know, position. So I uh, have accepted his uh, request to look for a bride for him, a wife for him, yeah. But I went everywhere, many places, uh, but I haven't seen one suitable. Mm. Today, uh, uh, coincidentally, I saw your daughter, yeah, and I think she is uh, exceptionally above the rest, above other women in uh, virtues and behavior and, you know, the way she carry herself, yeah. very dignity, yeah. Uh, I would like to uh, ask, you know, you, <laughs> for your daughter to marry the Prime Minister's son. Would you agree to that? Ah, no problem. If it's, if it's the Tudak Prime Minister, then I agree immediately. Yes. I thought I read this story. I did? Or is it similar? Similar, huh? Chairman, they all married the prime minister. It's too many. Okay, okay. Uh, so he come home and wrote a letter to send it to the prime minister Tudak. And then when Tudak, the prime minister, received the letter, he came in and said to the king, "Your Majesty, I have something to do in Save country, in Save. Probably city. They go all confusing." I thought it's a different country. Mm. Okay, I have something to do. Could you please um, give me a few days vacation? <laughs> uh, what are you going to do there? He say, um, let me think. Where was that country? I, I guess they they get, make it. Uh, Oh, I see. Hmm, they get it mixed up. <laughs> so he's going to Vung Sa now, okay, to take care of this national affair, <laughs> married his son to their daughter. Because if they are in the same country, then this uh, prime minister and the sub prime minister would have known each other. Because they say, I haven't seen him, but I have heard of his good name. You see what I mean? And then they say both, and then are he going the same country? That's no sense. Uh, translation problem or typing 
Okay, never mind that about that. Okay, uh, where, what are you going to do in that country? So he say, Majesty, uh, my last son is going to marry there. Uh, who is, whose house daughter is that? He say, that is the um, vice minister, Ho Yi. Ah, very good, very good. Congratulations, and the king said, yeah. <clears throat> so he uh, prepared everything with a lot of silver, gold, and jewelry, but on the way, just on the way to, uh, to give it to people. <laughs> I thought it's for dowry, but no. He gave all the way until there. And then when he arrived, you know, Ho Yi vice minister came out and greet him and etc., etc., happy, happy, okay. Uh, and Mr. Tudak saw that Ho Yi family, so many people, you know, preparing this and decorating that and beautiful arrangement, and then so many beautiful food and uh, very deli rare delicacies they are preparing. Mm. So he asked, he saw them doing all that. So he said, uh, Vice Minister, tomorrow uh, you are inviting the king or some VIP or something, and why so many food and arrangements? So uh, the Ho Yi, you know, say, no, no, tomorrow, because I want to have merit. So today, tomorrow we invite the Buddha and the Sangha to my house to offer meal and, and some good things. Uh, Tudak heard the name of Buddha and uh, Sangha, was very surprised, but, su but he felt very happy inside, as if some good omen or something, yeah. Uh, so he said, Vice Minister, who, who is the Buddha? What is he? What does he do? <laughs> What's his job? You know? <laughs> Please, can you explain to me? Probably he never heard of that before. Lucky for him, he has a son who want to marry it, otherwise he has no chance to know the Buddha. See, huh? Mm. Oh, the Ho Yi, you know, the, let's say, the buddy-in-law to be <laughs> said to him, Oh, you, you don't know? Oh. The Buddha was a prince from Tinh Phang, uh, the King Tenfang, you know, his name is Siddhartha. When he was born, there were 32,000 uh, gods and, uh, you know, a heaven being come down and to, to greet him, to, to praise him. And then even he was born and he walked seven, seven steps. And then he he saw his his finger in every direction, say. Uh, and then finally he put one hand up, one hand down on the earth, and say, "From the heaven to this earth, I am the highest." And his body is golden. He has thirty-two auspicious mark, and eighty beauty uh, sign. Yeah. I don't know if I have anything. <laughs> so disappointing. I didn't know how many angels or <laughs> diva came when I, my mother gave birth. <clears throat> I don't see any mark, just a lot of scars, you know, scars, 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 scars everywhere. Probably that's a beauty mark, I don't know. <clears throat> All right. If he stay at home, he would be the wheel-turning king, and then uh, ruling the the four direction, ruling all the kingdoms in the four direction. Wheel-turning kings are higher than other no normally king, almost like godly king. That's why. Okay. Because he observed that uh, human has uh, four suffering, like birth, 
old age, sickness, and death. So he left home. Mm. <clears throat> he be, he has been a, an ascetic, ascetic for six 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 years, and then later he, you know, at the end he became a Buddha. Mm. Mm, conquering uh, 80,000 80, million kind of, you know, mayas and negative, uh, negative forces and beings. Yeah. He has uh, four, he has ten kind of power, uh, four kind of uh, fearless uh, ability and uh, Eighteen kind of uh, uh, some kind of uh, method. Yeah, his uh, his uh, his light is brightened many corners. Even uh, brightened the whole three 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 worlds. You know. Yeah. So that's why we call him Buddha. But actually, Buddha. Of course, it means enlightened saints, yeah? But in Sanskrit, it means old men, just old men like Peter. <laughs> True. It's your fault. If you shave your beard, then you become younger. I look like him. Yeah, better maybe. I don't want to. <laughs> okay. And then, but vice minister, and why, why is called Sangha? Uh, what means Sangha? Please tell me. So uh, the vice minister told him, after he became Buddha, uh, the Brahman king came down and requested him to impart teaching to all beings. And after, he, uh, after the Buddha accepted that invitation, uh, he went to the deer park in Balanai country, Varanasi, I think, yeah, in uh, Deer Park. I, I visited that area. Mm. And then he stayed there and preached the four marvelous way to deliver yourself and others from suffering. Yeah. So at that time, five person, the first five person uh, became Arhat, yeah, finished all their karma in this lifetime. Uh, and then there's a many praise in how what the Arahant is like. Like he has uh, six uh, magical power, f- four uh, fun feeling power, uh, seven. I told you he likes he likes number. Yeah, <laughs> seven enlightening uh, way, and uh, eight. Eight uh, good uh, path, you know, like eight good virtues, yeah. And then wherever they go uh, in the sky, there there were eighty thousand people. Oh, in the sky. At that time, eighty thousand people from the heaven has attained also some uh, middle degree of enlightenment, and then. Countless, countless to being, you know, awakened to inspire to Buddhahood, aspire to Buddhahood. Uh, after that, he, the Buddha, saved Udbe Kajip one thousand person, you know, the group of that. Yeah, any group have a, has a leader, so this leader called Udbe Kajip and his thousand subordinate, also became Arahat. And then the third time, he go to. He uh, saved uh, Salif, Sariputra, uh, Maudala uh, Yanyana, mm. and many of their own disciples, like disciple of Sariputra, disciple of Malagayana, etc. Mm. All of them, uh, 500 persons, all liberated. And then these people became meritorious enough to and they have enough power to be able to liberate other beings as well. That's why we call him them Shanga. 
I mean the assembly of, of saints, yeah, assembly of saints. The prime minister Tudak heard all that. Oh, he feel, wow, precious, precious news. So happy, happy. <laughs> he he feel he feel like his body has become so soft. You know, like he has no more power to resist anything. He's so happy, happy. Yeah, and then he put his palm together. So excited, so happy. He couldn't wait until uh, tomorrow morning uh, to see the Buddha and the Sangha. Yeah, because his his heart is so sincere. That so suddenly, even though it's the midnight after midnight, it's very dark already. But he saw the whole earth is brightened with light from heaven, you know, it's also very bright, like daytime, more than daytime. Therefore, he's even more and more and more happy and believe in the Buddha. And then he doesn't wait until morning, he went all the way to La Yuki country <laughs> to find the Buddha, yeah. But when he, uh, when he walked out of the country, he saw the, I think he's, yeah. <laughs> he, originally he wanted to go to the next country, La Yuki. He didn't want to wait until morning, you know, to go to see the Buddha because he saw the light and brightened like that and heard all this story about Buddha. So he was so hurry. He, in the middle of the night, he want to go out. Yeah, to see the Buddha, not wait the Buddha to come. And then, uh, and then he went uh, after he leave the citadel, the wall, you know, the city wall. He saw um, a little um, how you say worship, worship place on the, on the roadside. This is about some some they worship some heaven being, eh? diva or something. And then he went inside. He bowed to to that <laughs> statue inside. And then suddenly he forgot about wanting to see the Buddha. He doesn't feel desire to see the Buddha anymore. And then suddenly the whole earth become darkened again, <laughs> so dark, so dark. <laughs> and he was so scared, maybe animals or ferocious uh, thing will kill him. So he don't care. He don't don't dare. He don't dare to to continue. So he he planned to go back inside the city and wait until tomorrow morning. Lucky for him, he had a very good friend already uh, die, but he uh, born into one of the high heaven. So he looked down, he saw him feeling so repentant. Yeah, so he flew down, he manifested himself in front of him as a human being, and he said to him, uh, lay, lay believer, uh, do not feel so repentant. Don't feel so sorry. If you go to see the Buddha, you will have Im immeasurable merit, comparable to one hundred of the cart with full of uh, jewelry and uh, precious thing. Yeah. Even if you just walk one step toward the Buddha. Is more than that, more than one hundred uh, card of jewelry and precious. If you go to see the world honor one, even you become more merit than than cannot even talk about. Yeah. Okay, lay believer, just go, go to see the Buddha. Do not uh, do not uh, retreat. Yeah. Because even uh, if uh, this lifetime you have uh, 100 uh, elephants that carry all the treasure for you, it's not even comparable to one step going toward the Buddha direction to see him. So if he walk many steps, then many <laughs> elephants, <laughs> you know, comparable. Yeah, just one step, and if 100 elephants carry a lot of full of precious stones, still cannot compare already. Yeah. 
<clears throat> and then the marriage, even more than that, that I cannot count. You go now, go now, believer, go, follower, go. Do not retreat, do not uh, feel uh, worry. Yeah. Even if you have the whole treasures of all this planet put together for you, it's still not comparable to walking one step to go out where the Buddha stays and visit him. Even then, the merits even more than that, that I cannot compare and count for you. Do not retreat, do not feel worried, do not uh, return, go, go, you know? Yeah, et cetera, et cetera, yeah? Mm. The merit will be multiple, millions time, billion time than that, than what I have just told you. Okay, okay. The Tudor Prime Minister heard that. Oh, happy, happy, yeah. And even suddenly his desire to see the Buddha and his respect and love come back to him, come back to him. And then, then the, the, the light is brightened the whole planet again, so he can see everywhere and not afraid. Because of his heart, you see, first he changed. He wanted, and then it's brightened everywhere for him. And then his desire to see Buddha dwindled because he bowed to some of the local gods somewhere, and then everything become dark. And then now he wants to see the Buddha again sincerely. So the the earth brighten again. This guy, this so off on off on like turn on turn off the light, turn on turn off. <laughs> it seemed like that. I heard that one person, I'm not, I'm not trying to advertise anything, one of your brothers from Taiwan, he told me, you know, personally, with a couple of other people uh, with me at that time, I don't remember who, yeah, he said one sister went to uh, Sihu, you know, looking at this jewelry uh, section, and, and she, she, she liked something very much, you know, one of the band, armband or something, and she could look in, look in. And then the one uh, take care of the jewelry said, just try it on, you don't have to buy, try it on. Okay. And then she, you know, she said, oh, well, it's, it's not, I don't know if I can buy it. She said, just try, no problem, don't have to buy. And then she put it on. And then the this uh, person, he's one of the um, Chinese uh, medical doctor, you know, Chinese, not Western. There's some chiropractic and all that. And he saw, he and his friend next to him saw that her body from the toe on go all the way, you know, gen gently they change, brighten light all over from here down up to here. And then uh, it's up to here, uh, when it's up to here, she suddenly take that band off and then the light stop right there. <laughs> So this chiropractor, I think Chen, Dr. Chen, he told his friend, you saw that? You saw that? And the friend also saw it. He said, yeah, stuck. <laughs> 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 so funny. <laughs> stuck. And he just said one, stuck. <laughs> he said in English. All the while, he, he, he told me a story in, in Chinese. But then when he talked about the friend says stuck, he said it in English. So very cute. <laughs> His friends said, yeah, I saw that, stuck. <laughs> you know, up here, up to here. And then because he took it off, uh, no more light all over the body anymore. Funny. <clears throat> all right. So it's just, uh, you know, your change of attitude and action make you this or that. Hmm? Okay. Make you in heaven or in, on earth or in hell. Yeah? Very simple. Mm. Because he took it out, he said, I don't, I don't want it. <laughs> Put it back. And then stuck. <laughs> the light gets stuck there. <laughs> well, at least two-thirds is bright. <laughs> don't know how long it lasts, though. Yeah. And because of his heart change, he suddenly, really, sincerely wished to see the Buddha again. So the whole earth, you know, at that time, at least where he was going, is all brightened like daylight. In the, like a midday light, so he was very happy. Walk, walk, walk. Yeah, come to see the honored one. The Buddha knew that he has 
planted good root, good merit root many, many uh, long, long time ago. So he he went outside for 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 arm. Oh, no, he went outside just to have a walk to see him. Yeah, so that he he can see the Buddha, and then. Uh, <laughs> And uh, the prime minister saw the Buddha coming toward him, you know, with all dignity, majesty, and beautiful, you know, beautiful looking, even physically. And then he went. Then he went there to. He doesn't know, you know. He saw him very, very powerful, dignified, or whatever. He doesn't know who is it. So he came there and said, "Sir, <coughs> uh, the war on no one uh, reside." Where where does he reside? Can you please show to me? <laughs> so the Buddha say, uh, please sit here and wait. <laughs> <laughs> so the the God from the peaceful uh, heaven saw that the Prime Minister Tudak already saw the Buddha and know nothing. <laughs> yeah, don't even prostrate to him and don't even politely say. Comment allez-vous? Thing like that. So <laughs> he's feeling. So he feel this is not correct. So he came down on earth, manifest himself into four person. Mm. Went in front of the Buddha, prostrate to him, and then four of them walk around the Buddha, three times, and then stand on the side on the right side of the Buddha. Uh, and the two the prime minister saw that he also copied. He did the same. Four straight, walk around three times, <laughs> and stand on the <laughs> side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At that time, the Buddha then, you know, preached to him the four wonderful methods of liberation. Yeah. Etc. Yeah? Mm. The two the prime minister after he heard that. He attained, you know, like one of the middle rank of uh, spiritual level of consciousness. Yeah, it's so happy, happy, as if he has been fed when he's so hungry, as if he has been given water when he's dying of thirst. Yeah. And then he bent, he kneeled down in front of Buddha and said, "Obeisance to the world honor one." In a Save uh, city. Uh, many people. How many people just listened to to your preaching and became enlightened, like like me? Yeah. Please, can you tell? So the Buddha say, in a Save country or city, uh, no one, no one is as uh, not the second one like you. No, no second person enlightened like you just now. Most of them uh, having wrong concepts, following some wrong uh, kind of religions or wrong belief. Therefore, it's uh, very difficult to find one who believe in the truth, yeah, of the Buddha teaching, of the enlightened teaching. Yeah. So the two dark said to him. Obeisance, obeisance to the world honor one. Uh, I will invite you. I will invite you to the Save country, so all the country citizen will uh, cut off with the wrong concept, a wrong belief, and follow you. The Buddha say, uh, being a monk, uh, being a renunciate monk. Uh, we cannot stay mixed together with lay people. If we have a place, you know, like, like um, because it's a different country, so if he go there, he cannot just sit around with everybody. If we have a, some ashram, yeah, mean, uh, pure and clean, then uh, it will be more convenient to preach over there. So. The two ducks say to him, "Obeisance to world honored one. I will go home and make an ashram. Uh, please, could you give permission?" So the Buddha say, "Because of the benefit for all beings, and also 
good merit, uh, create merit for yourself. You can try that. It will be limitless, you know, uh, reward for you, uh, you know, merit, okay? So he bowed to the Buddha and uh, went back to his country, went back, hmm, taking care of the marriage of his uh, last son, and then and then he went back to La Yuki country and told the Buddha, Obeisance to world honored one, I would like to make an ashram in my country to make offering to you, to your world honored one and the Sangha, but I don't know how to make it. What is the way to make it? Please uh, give, please uh, also. I say like, uh, please dispatch, you know, a, a monk, a Sangha member to come with me so that he can instruct me how to do it properly. So the Buddha thought to himself, Save country is full of uh, Brahmins who follow the wrong belief. Nobody can, uh, nobody can, how to say, convince them. I think only, only uh, Sariputra, because he was a Brahman informer before he became a monk with Buddha, he was a Brahman. So, yeah, and he also has a little intelligence. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the Buddha say this, not I. <laughs> yeah, cũng có chút đỉnh thông minh, meaning he also has a little intelligence. And a little, you know, and a little magical power or some power, yeah. I think okay to <laughs> dispatch him. <laughs> so he called Sariputra and said, Sariputra, uh, Tuda want to make an ashram to uh, propagate the Buddha Dharma, yeah, to lead the, all beings there to to to. To turn to the the right path, yeah. In a Savi country, so that he can invite me there to preach for Dharma, but he doesn't know how to do it. Doesn't know in which way is the more correct way to do. So you go there and uh, help him hmm, to build the ashram. So Sariputra say, yeah, obeisance to the Buddha. I go. Hmm. And to that. Ask the Saliputra. Oh, it's a long story. <laughs> I knew the story more or less, but I didn't remember it was so long. Yeah, when I read alone, I don't have to read, you see? And I had a lot of time. <laughs> I choose when I have time to read, so it didn't feel long. And now here, all of you with open mouth, open eyes, open ears. <laughs> I look at all of them. Yeah, some of them open mouth all the time. <laughs> You listen with your ear while you open your mouth. <laughs> yeah? What is the reason the mouth keeps open? <laughs> Eyes is to see me, ears to hear me, mouth do what? <laughs> mouth, <laughs> what do? <laughs> Can you please enlighten me? <laughs> <coughs> the Tudak Prime Minister asked the Sariputra, uh, <coughs> respected reverends, how many miles can the Buddha uh, walk every day? He said that the Buddha uh, so the Sariputra say, the world honor one um, can uh, travel like uh, every day half a mile, more or less like that. Yotung, I don't know actually. It's a different measurement at that time, where maybe a couple of kilometers or something like that, or maybe more than that. Yeah. It it is as if the uh, as fast as the wheel wheel. We're still in king, yeah. It's a diva kings, okay. 
So every from then, from then he went home from his uh, from his city Vungsan all the way to the where the Buddha now. Every uh, uh, oh, every twenty kilometers or I don't know yam maybe. I don't know, is that maybe every 10 meters? Whew, 20 yam, I don't know. How much is a yam? Anybody know? Kilometer. Huh? Like kilometer. What? Like kilometer? Like so every 20 kilometers he make a, a resting uh, place, yeah? Yeah. All the way up to Save country, yeah. 20 kilometer rest one time is okay? Walking, yeah? Um, too far? Too far. Then it cannot be yam, I don't know. Yeah, yam nowadays we translate it as miles, but then maybe every 10 kilometers, huh? Yeah, huh? Okay. Every 10 kilometers. Yam là mai biết rồi, nhưng mà cái yam hồi đó chắc nó khác cái yam bây giờ đó ba. Cái yam ở bên, 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 Bên Ấn Độ nó cũng khác cái dặm bên, bên Mỹ nữa. It's a different, different miles in, in India at that time, you know? And now they count it as miles in America. It's completely different, so I tell her maybe it's different. Because every 20 kilometers have one resting place, and it's too, too long for the Buddha, right? Mm. All right, anyway, he made many, many of that, you know, all the way up to Soviet country. So when they arrive in their house, uh, both of them resting a few days to recover their strength because walking so long and thinking and measuring and all that, it takes a lot of energy, huh? Mm. So they, both of them, Sariputra and the Prime Minister, take a rest together. <laughs> 